So this is our poster, State of the Nation, K-12 e-learning in Canada. And it is a poster presented by myself, Michael Barber, at Toro University, California, and my collaborator, Randy Labonte, from the Canadian e-learning network. Before I get into the specific details that this poster is presenting, I want to let the viewer know that this is actually the 15th year that we have conducted this annual study. And each year we are able to undertake the study because of the generous sponsorship from a number of organizations across Canada and the United States. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this year's sponsors. The origins of this study actually come from a similar study that was conducted in the United States. At the time, Canada was actually involved at a higher proportional level and had a longer history of distance learning at the K-12 level, but that was a story that wasn't being told. The basic premise behind the study was quite simple. We were interested in the level of activity that was happening with respect to K-12 distance online and blended learning in each of the provinces and territories as well as schools that fell under federal jurisdiction. As well, we wanted to know how that activity was governed or regulated. In order to answer those questions, we began with a survey of all of the ministries and departments of education across the country, as well as follow-up interviews with officials to ensure that we were getting the information correct. Most of the ministries and departments of education had significant documentation available on their website or published in a publicly available forum. In addition, over the years we've developed an extensive network of key stakeholders in most of the jurisdictions and they are often useful in describing whether or not the way in which things are intended to be implemented are how they are actually implemented at the ground level. Finally, over the years we've also developed an individual program survey where all of the online schools and blended schools can provide their data directly to us. With respect to the nature of regulation of K-12 distance online and blended learning, it was interesting that most provinces actually had some reference to distance learning in their Schools Act or Education Act. Unfortunately, in almost all of these cases, that reference was a single line that gave the Minister of Education the authority to regulate distance learning. It was only in Nova Scotia and in British Columbia where there was any extensive legislative regime in place. In the case of Nova Scotia, it was part of the collective agreement between the government and the Teachers Association, while in British Columbia there was a full section of the Schools Act, as well as the Independent Schools Act, that governed distance learning. Beyond the passing reference to distance learning in the legislation, policy handbooks tended to be the way in which distance learning was most often regulated. In terms of the types of programs that were in operation, as you can see from the map, in eastern and northern Canada, there tended to be a reliance upon a single province-wide program, whereas throughout most of central and western Canada, there tended to be primarily district-based programs. After using this type of taxonomy for the past 15 years, we are actually reaching a point where our use of these categories are less than useful in describing the true nature of many of these jurisdictions. The reality is that in many cases 
there are district-based programs that operate on a provincial level. So while the province has primarily district-run programs, those district-run programs enroll students from across the province. That kind of nuance isn't captured using this particular taxonomy anymore, which limits the usefulness of this particular map. One area that is quite clear is the reality that at least 7.5% of the K-12 population in Canada have taken one or more online courses during the previous school year. As you can see from the table, jurisdictions like Saskatchewan, Alberta, and British Columbia tended to be much higher than the national average. Most of the jurisdictions in eastern Canada as well as northern Canada tended to be well below the national average. It's also important to point out the fact that there isn't really a trend in the type of jurisdictions that are above or below the national average. So we aren't able to point to the fact that if provinces or territories had these types of programs, there would be more activity. Additionally, it's interesting to note that during the first full year that COVID was impacting education, there was a significant jump in the proportion of students that were engaged in distance or online learning. That level of growth seems to have leveled off to pre-pandemic levels with the most recent school year. One of the more interesting findings for the 2021-22 school year was the significant increase that we've seen in the number of distance and online programs over the past year. If you look at the province of Quebec as an example, there were 35 or more new programs that were added as part of a provincial pilot program. The number of programs in Ontario increased significantly by over 170 from the previous school year, most of which were private online programs looking to take advantage of the newly created online graduation requirement that indicates students have to complete two online courses in order to graduate from high school. We also saw a steady increase in recent school years in both Saskatchewan and Alberta. While there are many other findings that we could pull out of the annual report for the 2021-22 school year, these were some of the key takeaways that we saw, particularly when it comes to changes that have happened in recent school years. Having said that, we would encourage you to go to the project website, and view not just the most recent report, but all 15 years worth of data that we have available. So we'd like to thank you for joining our poster session.